Hello YouTube, today I'm going to be introducing you to one of my favourite features in 3D Studio Max. It was added to the application's considerable list of abilities in version 6.0. It is also known as a 3D newbie's worst fear. I'm talking of course about event-driven particle systems, or less of a mouthful particle flow, pflow for short. So what exactly is particle flow, and what on earth does it do? Well, particle flow is a particle system much like any other you'll find in 3D Studio Max. However, it relies on a system of tests and operators to provide you with your desired results. It provides enough variety to create just about any effect you need, if you have the know-how and can break your goal down into logical steps. For the next 15 to 30 minutes, I'm going to take you through the creation of a relatively simple, yet interesting project. To quote a television series which I've never watched, here's one I made earlier. In this example, a basic sphere moves through a particle flow emitter field. When it comes in contact with the particle, that particle changes color, rotates until it is upside down, ceases motion, and then changes color once more. You will see there's also a slight variation across the emitter in terms of the point at which the particle begins to rotate. Let's get started on this project. Reset your scene. Click the drop down box and choose particle systems. Then click PF source and drag it out in your perspective window, or your top viewport. Right click it, choose rotate, and enter 180 degrees on the X axis to rotate it right way up. Zoom out, head to the modify tab, and click particle view. Here we have the basic elements of our particle system. As you can see, we have a birth node determining when particles are born how many are born, and over what period of time they are born. We have a position icon, which decides whereabouts particles will be spawned, a speed icon, which determines the velocity of our particles, and a rotation icon, which determines which direction they're facing in. We also have a shape01 operator, which decides what the particle should look like when rendered, and a display operator to show our particles in the viewport. Particle flow can be broken down into sets of tests and operators. Here are the operators, and here are the tests. The tests are identifiable with the yellow icon. So let's get straight to it and we'll set up our current scene. We're going to bring in all the resources we'll need for this tutorial. So we'll go to our Create tab, hit the drop down menu, and click Standard Primitives. Click Sphere, and we'll drag out a sphere. Don't make it too big, that should be just about right. We also need the geometry which is going to be instanced into particles. For this we'll use a pyramid. Drag that out in there. And we'll move it off to the side of it. Next we'll need a deflector. Head to the space warps, drop down box, deflectors. Choose U deflector and we'll drag it out here. It can be any size and positioned anywhere you want. A U deflector allows you to select an object to act as the deflector. So we'll click Pick Object, click our sphere, and now our scene is prepared. So let's click our particle flow emitter, head to the Edit tab, once again open Particle View, and now we'll make some changes to our particle system. So you see here we have a shape 01. This operator will only allow you to select from a list of preloaded presets. So what we're going to do is look down here in our list of operators and we'll take for example a shape instance. Hold it over the shape 01 so that you see a red line appear, then release. Shape 1 will be replaced with shape instance. So if we have a look at the properties for shape instance here, we have a particle geometry object. Click none and click your pyramid. The pyramid will now be the primary particle for this emitter. So if we head down to display 01 operator, under type select geometry, you will see our particle is now visible. We need to make a few more modifications. Let's head up into birth, and we'll set the emit start and stop to 0, and the amount to 30. Now 30 particles will be born at the beginning of our animation on the same frame. That's frame 0. But if you notice, we've still got a problem, our particles are moving. Let's head into speed 01 operator, change speed to 0, and then we'll head into our rotation 01, 
change rotation to world space, our particles are now more ordered and they're not moving. Now we can begin customizing our particle emitter. So let's head down to display 01 geometry and we'll change the color to white. In this project I'm going to color code everything to make it easier to understand. What needs to happen next is for us to break down our overall goal. So what needs to happen? Well, our sphere needs to hit a particle. When it hits the particle, the particle needs to rotate. There are quite a number of ways we can do this. In this example, I'm going to go with a collision test. Basically, the collision test detects whether the particle has gone through a collision event. If so, it continues on to the next connected event. Let's drag out a collision test and place it below display 01 so that our line turns blue and release. We have a connection point on the side of our collision, but for now let's deal with the test itself. Click Collision 01 and add a deflector. Choose the deflector we created earlier and not the sphere which is now acting as a proxy. Okay, so our deflector has been added. Next, we're going to create the conditions necessary for the rest of our particle flow to work. Bearing in mind that once our particles begin to rotate, we will need to have a way to cause them to stop rotating. For this I'll use the age test, and how the age test works is, if a particle's age is determined to be equal to, greater than, or lower than a certain number, it will continue on to the next event. The problem with this is, our particles will already have experienced a certain amount of age by the time our sphere collides with them, and that's going to cause problems later. So how do we reset the age of a particle? Well, for this we can use spawn. Grab spawn, and drag it out below our previous event, release plug collision 1 into spawn. Click spawn and you'll see its options. Check delete parent and ensure restart particle age is enabled. Click display 2 and set the color to green to signify motion. Click OK and set the type to geometry. Now let's animate our sphere and see what happens. Close particle view, click the sphere, click move Enable Auto Key and drag your sphere through the particles. Frame 30, move sphere, frame 50, move sphere. Now this does look quite messy, so let's fix a little problem. Turn off Auto Key and click Particle View. Head into Deflector and set our Test True If Particle Collides speed to continue. Now, when our particles collide with the sphere, they will not be affected and will not move. And if we run our animation forward, you will see that our sphere is in fact colliding with the particles. Once the collision takes place, we are passed on to the next event, where the particle dies, then respawns using the spawn operator. We can verify this is the case, because as you can see here, our green color has taken effect. So how do we get these particles to rotate? Well, that's rather simple. First, we'll add in our spin operator, down here, release, and our particles net will now begin spinning when the sphere encounters them. But that's not quite what we're looking for. We want them to rotate on a specific axis, the Y axis in this case. Click spin 01, under spin axis choose world space, and we'll set Z to 0 and Y to 1. Press enter, and now our particles will rotate only on the Y axis, which is closer to what we want. However, we need a way to stop these particles from rotating. This is where our age test comes in. So grab age test and place it below spin 01. This age test is now going to assess the age of our particles and if it is greater than a certain value, it will pass on to the next event. But there is some information we require in order to configure our age test properly. We want our particles to rotate to the point where they are upside down and no further. This information is essentially the number of frames which pass between the initial collision point and the point where they are upside down. So as you can imagine, we will use a very simple method to gather this information. Find the point at which our particle turns green, in this case frame 3. Then progress the animation forwards until the particle is upside down. Let's go with frame 16. So in that case, 13 frames elapse. Test value, set this to 13. Variation set this to 0. This is not going to have any effect yet. However, let's pass it on to the next event. Let's place another spin operator and we'll connect age test to spin. We'll then click spin 02 
random 3D, world space, set Z to 0, and spin rate to 0. We'll also set the display 03 type to geometry and color to bright red. Click OK. Now if you play our scene, the sphere collides with the particle which begins to rotate until the particle age detects that it has rotated for a total of 13 frames, at which point it passes on to the third event. In our third event, our spin is set to zero. So our particles are now going to be influenced by this spin and they stop moving. You can of course go back and modify. For example, if I wanted these particles to rotate further, click age test and increase the value. And you can see the effects live. And that concludes my tutorial for today. A brief introduction and project in particle flow. Thanks very much for watching. Please subscribe if you found this useful, and I'll see you next time.